all the Harry Potter stuff on. No magic, no green screens. Check this out. This video is sponsored by Micro Center. <sighs> All right, let's get into this. You comment the ideas, I make them. That's how this works. So in the last video, we did some real mind control Dr. Octopus arms, which by the way, just go watch that video if you haven't yet. It's a good one. So if we look at the top comment on that video, which by the way, you should go watch, with some real falcon wings. I've also been seeing Big Hero 6 microbots. So I hear you guys, both those projects are in the works, but both those projects are extremely hard to do. Like I want them to be the best I can. If we're gonna make falcon wings, like, you know, we're gonna actually try and fly with them. So they're just gonna take a little bit more time. Definitely subscribe for that. It's gonna be great. So in the meantime, I was going back through like all my older videos and I kept seeing invisibility. But how can you see it if it's invisible? Ah, good one. No, but I've always been fascinated with that idea. What if you could actually turn invisible? You could, um... Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest guys, we'd all do some weird stuff if we were invisible, so <laughs> let's skip the what and move to the how. Uh, but first, if we could get a couple more project ideas down in the description, that'd really help me out. Some might take longer than others, so it's really good to get like a couple ideas. So when I think of invisibility, my mind immediately goes to Harry Potter's invisibility cloak. You guys know that cloak that he puts on when he wants to like spy on Snape and stuff. Basically, anything under the cloak becomes perfectly invisible. You also got stuff like Miles Morales' Spider-Man suit. Doctor Strange, I think, can go invisible. Invisible Woman? Ah, oh, the name guy's kind of slacked on that one though. But yeah, invisibility is everywhere and nowhere. Oh, come on, you didn't even see that one coming. All right, so how are we actually gonna make this real? Well, the easiest option, just take this fucking thing, wrap it around yourself, click a few buttons, and boom, you're invisible. Obviously though, in the real world, it doesn't look quite as cool. For those who don't know how this works, basically I just took a still image of the background and then we use software to key out all of this color and replace it with that still image. Actually, when doing research, I got a lot of this type of stuff. So a good way to tell if this is real or not is to check if the camera is static. And if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Because as soon as you move the camera to a new perspective, that, yeah, the shot completely breaks down. So clearly, <sighs> we're gonna need another option. So the goal is to basically make an invisibility suit like that but have it be in the real world. So to understand invisibility, we gotta start with what actually is visibility. Basically light gets emitted from a source like the sun, light bulbs, etc., and bounces off objects in all directions. Say this water balloon is the light and my lovely volunteer here is the uh, object we're trying to see. The light hits a target and the splashes bounce off in all directions. And some of those splashes reach our eyes. So based on all the different splashes and all their different angles, we can see the object and know what it looks like. Sorry, I hate this demo. This is a stupid demo. So in order to make something invisible, the light reaching our eyes can't be obstructed by the thing we're trying to make invisible. That's why glass looks invisible, because most of the light we see passes right on through. Now there's a couple ways we could go about this. First, we could develop some sort of like jellyfish potion that makes our entire body translucent, and we can just run around naked and we're good. I'm gonna be honest though, that doesn't sound like the best idea. We'll call that plan B and maybe move on to something like bending light. If we can somehow bend the light around us, we can create the illusion of invisibility. And this seems to be like the most common method I found when researching this. And it actually already exists in small scale. Rochester cloak is a perfect example of this. Multiple lenses are used to bend light around a subject. First lens focuses incoming light down to a point, just like a magnifying glass. After it reaches that point, the light then re-expands where another lens redirects that light back to the original path. And now you have a region of invisibility. This method looks super cool and works pretty well, but only from one angle. If you move slightly off axis or look at it from the side or anywhere except right down the middle, uh, the illusion completely the goes away. So another type of invisibility lens that you've probably already seen before is this thing right here called a lenticular lens. Does that look invisible? Its invisibility properties were first debuted a couple years back, uh, actually researched for military technology, and they called it quantum stealth. Let me just appreciate that name for a second. So cool, like take notes, invisible girl. Well, it sounds super cool until you find out it's the exact same stuff as those 3D holograms you used to have. Same exact thing, just without the picture on the back. Then every YouTuber and their mother goes clicks baits invisibility shields on the bandwagon, gets millions Millions of views, all just for a plastic sheet. You sound a little salty, dude. Yeah, so what? I'm a little salty about this. This could have been it. I, this could have been the end of the video. Now I gotta go play around with lenses, figure out how to like improve this somehow. Whatever, I'll still explain how it works real quick. <laughs> these lenses have tons of tiny little ridges in them. Now, all these ridges bend light differently depending on what angle you're looking at it from. Again, you go back to our water balloon demo. Your position will affect what light interacts with you uh, and what you perceive. It's a lot simpler than they make it sound with quantum stealth. I think they're calling that because they're just dealing with tiny little photons on the quantum level, but you know, technically everything's quantum, but it works on the same principle of how any other lens affects light. So when you stand in front of the lens, the light that bounces off you goes through the lens 
lens and is scattered along that lenticular plane. The background light passing through the lens is also distorted in the same way, which is okay as long as the background is like solid colors or includes lines that line up with the lenticular plane. The best way to describe it is it's a real life smudge tool in Photoshop. Like if you smudge something along the line, it doesn't matter, it's still gonna look like the line, but the illusion completely breaks down if you stand in front of anything that's like not straight lines, which is the main downside to this method. It only works in certain circumstances. Also, even in the most perfect conditions, you're still gonna get like a blurry splotch. It's used in this way, it doesn't have the ability to show clear images. But again, not bad at all for a piece of cheap plastic. Like, look at that, already makes the back wall disappear. It's good, but I was thinking like, what are some ways we can improve upon this technology? Like how can we make it work against all surfaces and make it produce a clear image? Well, remember, you actually can get a clear image when the lens is up close to something. This is the same stuff as the 3D holograms. This looks pretty clear and 3D. So I thought, what if we could just replace this 3D hologram with a picture of our background? That would work for one specific area, but again, it's not very dynamic. But what if we had a picture that constantly updated our background, like using a screen? Now we're getting somewhere. So maybe we can make like a screen suit shield cloak using these lenses and screens that'll perfectly blend us into any surrounding. Sounds awesome, but immediately tons of problems with this idea. One of the main issues that we need to solve is the perspective issue. Kind of like those 3D paintings. From one angle, it looks fine, but as soon as you get off a little bit, illusion completely falls apart. Again, this brings up another problem, and that's that we see in 3D. This is really hard for me to demonstrate on camera because it's a 2D video, but in the real world, it's super apparent. I guess the best way I can show you this is if you close one eye and just look at stuff, your hand, and everything else around you. Notice how everything flattens down, and it becomes a bit harder to tell how far away everything is. You still can kinda estimate the depth because your brain is really good at you know picking up visual cues, uh, but just notice how everything flattens. So in order to truly get the cloak perfect, we not only need to solve the perspective issue, but also the 3D issue, which makes everything even harder. But again, these lenticular lenses can help. Remember, they have the ability to project light from different angles, which allows them to either show multiple pictures, depending on which angle you're looking at, at, or they can show one picture in 3D, both of which can be useful to us. Because remember, those are actually the two problems we're trying to solve, trying to make it look 3D, and also trying to show multiple images to multiple angles. But the catch is they can only do one of those things. So we need to figure out another way to do the other one. So I think I've got a way to do this, and it should make a really convincing cloak for one person. We can use the lenticular sheet for its 3D effect. We project two stereoscopic images, one for the left eye and one for the right eye, cut them into strips and splice them together. That way the lenticular lens will show one perspective to one eye and one perspective to the other. So that's how we'll get our 3D image. Then we can use some AI and computer vision to detect the person, project the correct perspective. This is what's known as the parallax effect, and it just might work. Like you can actually get apps on your phone that do this. Text your face and adjust your perspective accordingly. So it appears like your phone is a deep void. So what if we just replace the void with a convincing background? Should look like the phone see-through. I'm gonna tackle this one step at a time though. So let's first work on like the AI and computer vision and projecting the right perspective. Um, then we'll double the cameras, splice the images so we get that 3D effect. So to scale everything up, we need some nice high-res screens, high-res TV will probably do it, and some nice camera equipment, which actually reminds me about the giveaways. Last time we gave away a PS5. Congratulations on the winner of that. So I figured this time around, you know, we're gonna go get a TV. Might as well get you guys a TV too. If you wanna win this one, all you gotta do, thumbs up this video and subscribe, um, then hop over to Instagram and follow us there. We'll post a picture for this video, so just like that, and we'll go through the comments and likes and everything and pick a winner. I really like these giveaways, guys. I feel very fortunate to be able to be doing this for you. So if there's anything you want uh, related to building or cool technology, drop it down below. Yeah, we'll give it away next time. All right, to the store. So we headed on down to Micro Center looking for a TV and some camera equipment. And actually when we pulled up, there were tons of people waiting outside for it to open. We we're kind of curious actually, and we got to chatting with the managers and it turned out they're basically the only physical store that carries products like the high-end 3000 series graphics cards, which are clearly in high demand. They've also got tons of like 3D printers and other electronics and DIY stuff. It really is like tech heaven. It's true, like you really don't see this in any other stores anymore. Um, they got 25 locations all across the US. So I picked out a TV that should be big enough to cover my body. Then we went to check out the cameras, but not before doing a little J laser promotion on their computers, uh, which they have a ton of, by the way. Look what I did. Got so pranked. And if standard computers aren't enough for you, they also got a custom PC builder to spec out the best PC for your budget. Like Micro Center's motto is they keep the quality at a low price to actually build a relationship with the customer. Like, check this out. They're actually offering you a coupon code for a free pair of wireless Bluetooth headphones. Again, haven't seen any other stores doing this, so check that out if you're interested. All right, got the TVs, cameras, 
back to the shop. So I threw together a program that uses an AI face tracking neural network to track my face. Can then use that position of my face to adjust the background to be correct for my perspective. To get the background image, I'm just using a wide angle camera. Uh, that way we can punch in on different spots and adjust the perspectives accordingly with software. It's not perfect, but you can sort of see the potential, right? Like I'm just using a standard webcam to track my face and I haven't really fine tuned everything yet. And if it's unclear, we're basically trying to turn my laptop screen invisible and make it look like glass. So that way anything in between the laptop screen and the camera on the other side will be invisible. You might think this is sort of similar to just holding up your phone with the camera open and like scaling everything right so you see the perspective. Keep in mind, the laptop's stationary. I'm the one moving around, not the camera. Like if you moved around the camera, you could potentially sort of get that effect. But no, the software is doing all the work here. So that's pretty neat. So a little bit more coding, I was able to add in depth tracking too. Just a simple implementation. Basically it takes the size of your face, tries to figure out how far away you are from the camera. No matter if you move the computer or yourself or both together, you can now read your perspective in comparison to the computer and project the correct image onto the screen. Again, I still don't have it dialed in that well yet. But again, you can see the potential. Like when someone walks behind the screen, it looks kind of convincing but if they were between the camera and the screen it would look invisible but again there is a lot of lag things aren't matched up correctly so it still needs to be optimized a little bit more now i'm going to be honest guys i'm not a programmer i'd say my programming knowledge is on par with like my driver's ed mentality just do the bare minimum and try not to kill anyone so to help out i talked to an expert in the world of computer vision and augmented reality he runs a youtube channel called augmented startups which would be your first place to check out if you're interested in this sort of computer vision ai I'm currently working on a fully autonomous computer vision and drone, so very cool stuff. So after some talking, we settled on using some specialized AI computer vision hardware uh, that should give us a more accurate and faster track. Uh, we then actually played around with some 3D room scans because uh, before we we're just using basically a flat image, but when we add a 3D model, it definitely adds another layer of realism to it. Like it kind of looks like we opened up a portal to a new world. Unfortunately, this method isn't very dynamic because it requires you to have a super high resolution 3D room scan of wherever you are. In terms of like dynamic invisibility and being able to go places and just be invisible, I think we're probably gonna have to stick to the camera method, but he did give me some helpful tips on that. He showed me how to smooth out my tracking. Do you mind just showing me how to move that virtual camera around? So then I scaled up my original design to the bigger monitor we got. And again, this led to some more problems. First, the scaling and motion settings were all off again, just due to the increased size of the screen. Perspective was way off and the brightness was also messed up too. Cause right now I'm using a single camera system to pick up the background. The background picture is coming from like a small area in the center of the screen. But from someone who's looking at the TV from the front, it doesn't always line up with this cone field of view from the cameras. Any place that's mismatched, the image is gonna look a little bit weird. Like ideally we could have the entire back of the screen just be one giant like camera. Blend all the images together to make the perfect display. But that's extremely complicated to do. So instead I spent just hours trying to figure out how to manipulate these images, warp them to produce a convincing background. After a bit more research, I realized to actually show a believable image, we're gonna have to make it 3D somehow. I mean, for some scenes where the background is like a flat plane, like my wall here, it doesn't matter too much, but if there's a bunch of different objects, some in the foreground, some in the background, 3D aspect is important. Because as you move around, the closer objects will move more than the further ones. And you can see this happening with our full 3D room scan, but again, we can't be getting full scans of everywhere we're going. But I did a little bit more research and I I think we can actually solve this issue with more AI. This is so cool, guys. This recently developed program can take flat images and use context-aware layered depth in painting to render 3D parallax motion. Yeah, I'm literally just reading the abstract off this paper, you know, again, not a programmer. But just look at how cool this is. We can go from a normal flat image to a fully rendered 3D video. They've got all their code on GitHub if you want to look into this more, but yeah, we can use this to render out our camera images to 3D, then use our original face tracking AI to see where the person's looking from and show the correct perspective. This does still take a bit of time to render, so if we stay in the same spot, it has time to render out the 3D picture, but when we're moving around, we can still use our standard flat picture and tracking in real time. Hopefully this makes sense though, I'm trying my best to explain it, and again, I'm not a programmer, so this took forever to do. But finally, with a bit of tweaking, I think I got a pretty convincing effect working. And also, I want you guys to be seeing exactly what I'm seeing, and I can't really do that if I'm trying to hold a camera up to my face, because the you know thing's trying to see my face. So what it did instead is had the AI track the camera using a QR code I mounted to it. So if we set everything up, as you can see, anything between the TV and the camera is essentially invisible. Just a matter of tweaking the settings so they're perfectly in match with what we're actually seeing. Overall, it does a great job, but there are still a few problems. You can still see some reflections from the TV glare. The warping algorithm still messes up slightly. TV image is just a little bit softer than real life, but if you really dialed in and keep the movement pretty steady, the effect is very cool. Like it looks like you disappear. So lastly, we need to control alt delete those bezels.
Well, I broke the TV. I hardly even touched it. Turns out LCDs don't like it when you rip the sides off. The TV just shocked me. I'm uh, kind of tasting metal, but I've kind of always wanted to do this, and I think this is the perfect excuse. <laughs> All right, well, I guess let's get another TV. I'm thinking OLED this time, because it should be a little bit more robust and easier to modify. Like, we might even be able to curve it around us. Oh, I broke the OLED. F it only took me like five minutes this time. Turns out, OLEDs don't like being messed with either. They're even more fragile. Imagine like having a lot of money and then just like lighting on fire. Oh, uh, like this video. Guess what I got? It's another TV. Place your bets now if you think I'm gonna f this one up too. Clearly TV bezels, turns out there's a reason for them. I guess that makes sense. So if we can't actually get rid of them, we need another like creative way to make it look like we got rid of them. So again, I was playing around with these lenses and look what happens if we actually bend them up around the bezels. Bezels disappear, kinda. And I was already gonna add these lenses to the TV anyway, so I'll just make it curve up on the edges and that way it should blend the TV image with the background image. So I covered the entire screen with these lenses, leaving a spot for the detection camera. And I honestly think it looks cooler this way. Like kind of looks like a mysterious magical box that Harry Potter might actually have. And I can make it battery powered with the help of a battery and a power inverter. So last thing we got to figure out is how we're actually going to wear this thing. Like we could just hold it up as a shield or something, but I mean, that's kind of an original. It's been done before. Like I kind of wanted it to curve around us, but I don't, we can't do that. Still want to keep that Harry Potter vibe, even if it's not like a full invisibility cloak. So I decided to mount it to my back. That way we can cover it up with like a snap off cloak when we're not using it. Then when we want to go invisible, we just rip off the cloak. It breaks away, revealing the screen, making us invisible. So in order to still get that pass through view, uh, I mounted the camera to the TV with a metal bracket that wraps around our chest. Cause it is very important that this camera stay in the same area in relation to the TV. So the framing doesn't get all messed up. And yeah, that I think should do it. But real quick though, before I test this, here's some projects that you guys made and sent to me. We got the Wolverine, Star Wars, and Captain America. Awesome job, guys. Definitely keep sending me these projects on Instagram, at video, or just email them too. Super inspiring, love doing this segment. But all right, let's give this thing a shot. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, I got all the Harry Potter stuff on. No magic, no green screens. Check this out. So as you can see, it's kind of convincing. Found it works best though with slow movements uh, and like medium lighting conditions. Cause if it's too bright, the screen just gets washed out. Uh, and if we like rush too fast and it's too jerky, the tracking program can't really keep up and the image lags a little bit. But when it does work, ooh, it's super cool. Come on, tell me that's not cool. No green screens, no nothing. I'd say it's like a 90% invisibility. Kind of looks like we're looking through glass sort of. And comparing it to the plain lenticular lens, I think it's better, especially up close. Uh, but even from far away when like with all the software turned off and the tracking algorithm of them turned off. It's still kind of like dynamic camo. It'll still act kind of like a chameleon and give us the same colors as our background. And now normally this would be the part where I'd edit like a super cool montage or something, but this is just a hard video to film. Like perfect circumstances, I'd just be filming nothing, I'm trying to show a video of invisibility. But hopefully you guys think this is cool. Like I think it has potential, even if it does look a little goofy. I still don't have my legs covered and also the 3D effect definitely needs some tweaking. I didn't think it was that believable. Again, it's hard to show on camera, but I'm gonna have to leave that version too. It's one thing I do really want to try uh, is using the special 360 lenticular lens. Right now these lenses only change perspective along one axis, but with these 360 fisheye lenticular lenses, it changes in all directions. It just uses the same technology, but just in a fisheye pattern. So in theory, we could simplify this whole thing down, get rid of the whole face tracking thing, and just use these lenses to show the correct perspective for whoever's looking. Only bottleneck now is the resolution. Like you're basically trying to fit the data from every single perspective all into one image. So just like if you zoom in far on any image, it's gonna get pixelated. But better screens are coming out every single year, which is only gonna help. But there it is, guys. It's my take on invisibility for now. Again, maybe we'll come back to this in the future. I don't know, if you have any suggestions, let me know down below. So once again, drop a thumbs up if you did. And of course, subscribe for projects like the Falcon Wings and just lots more. Thanks, guys. Peace.